Morning, Dwayne here, Dry Creek Wrangler School. Uh, Mom and I are out here making a video actually on a Friday morning. We had a, is today Friday? Today is Thursday. So we had an abbreviated special class this week for the Florence, Alabama Police Department. They were up here for three days. They left yesterday afternoon. And uh, so we've got the rest of the week off. And uh, so we're making a quick video and then we're gonna get in the truck and head east. Uh, tomorrow is Mama's 50th birthday. She said it's okay if I tell you on there. She said, I've earned every dang year and I'm proud of it, she said. Um, so we're gonna head out. She wanted to go to Lookout Mountain and, uh, and she wanted to go to a theater production on Sound of Music over there. Now, do I love my wife? Yes, I do. So am I taking my wife to a theater production of The Sound of Music? If that's what she wants, uh, that's what she's gonna get. So we're gonna head out there uh, when we get done here. Several years ago, I, uh, I bought a, we were living in Kansas out in the Flint Hills, and uh, I bought a filly. She was a granddaughter to Pepto Boone's Mall. She wasn't broke, uh, she's really athletic, but a real big engine, what we call a big engine kind of horse. Uh, she had a lot of life to her. She didn't have a lot of trust. And uh, so I bought this filly and we started her and put her under saddle and uh, had taken her out of the round pen, had been out a couple times with her um out you know out actually out on the trail and uh my buddy he cowboyed for a living and she was staying at his place because he had uh facilities and where i was living at the moment i didn't have any facilities and so he was looking after grass for somebody now in kansas what they do is they they at least they're in the flint hills they'll buy tractor trailer loads of cattle bring them up usually from Mexico, and uh, steers and heifers, and dump them out on these pastures. And that blue stem grass, man, really puts weight on these young cows really fast. And so guys will buy these cattle, put them on these pastures for the summer, round them up uh, at the end of summer, and sell them. And the amount of weight that they gained uh, in that two or three months out there, however long they're out there, that's their profit. Uh, now that's a simplification but that's kind of what it was and uh, so rich looked after grass for one of these guys he was in charge of the cattle that were out there and everything and he uh so he told me one day he said Dwayne, we we got to gather up and uh these cattle out in this pasture out here and ship them and if you want to come help and i said yeah and that'll be a really good chance to advance reckless that was what i called the filly to advance her up you know so yeah we'll come help so the day came, we loaded her up in the horse trailer. Everybody loaded up. We went out there to the edge of the pasture. Uh, and I got her out, tightened up the cinch, put the bit in her mouth. And then we headed through the gate into the, to the pasture. Now it was a really big pasture and there was trees and, and washouts and it was hilly. It's the Flint Hills, all right? If, if you don't have a lot of experience in Kansas, we're not talking about the flat wheatlands okay this is the flint hills well when we went out in this pasture i knew immediately oh i done messed up i done messed up she uh, the grass was high enough right there it was tickling her belly which she had never experienced before and man she tightened up like a it was like riding a stick of dynamite and her eyes were about this big and she had a hump in her back now i had a really good saddle and I had a night latch on that saddle, and I'm not ashamed to tell you that it wasn't very long. I reached down and got a hold of that night latch because uh, I was pretty sure she was just going to just come uncorked at any time. Well, three or four of us, two or three of us on horseback heading out through there, and her head's up, and she's tense, and she's whinnying. Anytime a horse moves off, she's whinnying. First time we come up over a rise, and there's about three steers standing there in the grass, she stopped, snorted, and looked at them. And uh, man, I pulled myself deeper in the saddle. I said, oh boy, I done messed up. She wasn't ready. She wasn't ready. Um, but those steers, they moved off and we followed. And, and the other guys I'm riding with, they moved off to where they're supposed to be. You start pushing everything in one direction. 
And uh, it just was not going well for me and for poor Reckless. And so finally I got Rich's attention and I called him over <laughs> very gently. I wasn't waving up here, I'm like, very gently. And he come trotting up and of course the horse, you know, he helped me start her. He knew the horse. And uh, so he come trotting up and I told him, I said, buddy, I'm not gonna be any help to you today at all. And he assessed the situation immediately and he said, man, we got all the help we need moving cattle. You just take care of your little colt, she, all right? Just don't let her get in a bind. And uh, that's, that's your important thing. Just focus on her today. And so he went on. So I was able to take my focus away from trying to move cattle with this thick of dynamite I'm riding, this powder keg I'm on. So I was able to relax and just come in and just focus on her. And uh, after a little while, she kind of relaxed a little bit. And when we got way to the other side of the pasture, all the other gathered, that's where everybody was meeting over there. And I saw two, two or three uh, head of uh, I don't know, heifers and steers, they were on the fence over there. So I'm just riding a snaffle bit. So I just sat up here and I just kind of bumped her and with my body, I just kind of moved over to those steers and we headed towards those steers. And as we're heading over there, those steers moved off away from her. And I swear, I saw the light bulb. It was like, it was like a cartoon, man. I saw the light bulb click on in her head and I saw her go, oh this is what I'm supposed to be doing. And she headed off after them steers on her own. And when they kind of moved into the herd, she looked over here and there were two or three standing on, a, on the bank of a little arroyo wash. And she on her own without me turning her, she was like, hey, can we go get those? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, baby doll, we'll go get those. We went over there and got those and moved those. And, and so then we just started moving cattle and she just came down. And, and she started moving cattle and we had a good rest of the day. It was really good. Um, the cowboy that taught me the most, the most about horses, more than anybody out there, uh, is from Kansas. His name's Tony Smith, out of Opie, Kansas, down there. And uh, he told me, he said, and he hammered this and hammered this. He said, Dwayne, you've got to set these horses up to succeed. Now what happened on that day was I did not set my horse up to succeed. Um, it wasn't intentional, but I made the mistake, probably the number one mistake that most horsemen make, I got in a hurry. I took her further than she was ready to go. And I put her in a situation that could have been, um, in the long run, could have been damaging, not, not physically, but it could have really set me back in her training. Um, we've got to set these horses up to succeed. And so let, let me give you an example. All right, if you watch many of my training videos, many of my horse videos, you know that I don't let, when I go out and catch a horse and I put them on a halter, I don't let them graze. They don't graze. When we're riding, they do not graze. All right, when I tie them up, they're tied up short enough, they can't get their head down to grace, they don't graze. By the way, Don Lino, Africa. Uh, this cigar has really made its way into my rotation for a nice, mild, smooth uh, morning cigar with, with coffee. It, it sets right there with my Charter Oak Connecticut Shades. Um, if I don't tell you, you're, you're gonna be asking, so there it is. Um, so I don't let them graze, but now all, all, let me see. Out of my seven head that I have here, five of them, we've got hobble broke now. Five of them are hobble broke. Now when I hobble break my horses, I go through the training session, like on the video, it, I've got a video of it, and I use the lariat on their feet, each one individually, just calmly, and I help them learn to give the pressure. But I don't hobble break my horses in a round pen. I hobble break them out here in the yard. So the first time I put the hobbles on my horse, I drop that lead rope and I step back. I mean, after I give them a little tug, let them find the hobbles, then I drop the lead rope and I step back. And so the first time they're hobbled, I let them put their head down and start grazing. 
Now, why do I do that? We train the horse's mind. We train their attitude. We direct their outlook on life, their approach to that given situation. And we try to make that given situation as positive as we can to set them up to succeed. So the only time they get to graze, the only time they get to graze once they're caught is when they have the hobbles on. And so the first time they have the hobbles on, they're in grass and they get to put their head down and graze and they're like, hey, this is a pretty good thing. And so now when, we're, when I'm working down here in the arena with, with the students and I ride my horse down, uh, I get off my horse, I put the hobbles on, she puts her head down to graze and she doesn't go anywhere. I have set her up to succeed. When I start young horses, uh, now I, it's not a thing with rodeo. I've had rodeo for so long, she's, uh, it's, it's not an issue with her. But when I start young horses uh, that I haven't, that hasn't been totally spoiled by mama, um, I never tie them up, never, ever. I don't tie them up um, to brush them. I don't tie them up to saddle them. I don't tie them up to, to do anything. I never tie those horses. I get myself in a situation where if I'm riding with other people, I got somebody there, I'm like, here, hold my horse for a minute. That horse never gets tied up. You take a young horse, I get to talking, I never can keep these things lit. You take a young horse that's fresh and a little nervous, and you take them and tie them up and something kind of spooks them, you've set them up to fail. That's how you teach them to pull back. But if you want to set your horse up to succeed your young horse, you want to wait. And when you go on your first big ride with that horse and they come back kind of tired and kind of tuckered and it's like, man, I've never been through that before, then take them and tie them up. And so the first time they're tied up, it's a good thing. They're like, man, I want to stand here. I want to rest. So me being tied up is actually a good thing. And so you set your horse up to succeed. It's the same with you, all right? You've got to set yourself up to succeed. Guys are, are commenting and getting on here and asking me, you know, that they're wanting to make changes in their life, guys and gals, people young and maybe not so young, and they're wanting to make changes in their life. And they're like, Dwayne, what do I do? Set yourself up to succeed. Set yourself up to succeed. Uh, how much are you sabotaging your own personal improvement. Now, I have too, and I've talked about it on here. I have to, uh, I have to guard my calm because truthfully, I'm, I'm kind of a temperamental scratchy fellow, all right? And I really got to work at it. So when I started correcting that and changing that part of myself, I set myself up to succeed. And how did I do that? I got rid of all the things in my life that would sabotage my calm. And all of the people in my life that would sabotage my calm, I got rid of them. Uh, some of you folks that get on here and comment, you may notice after your first comment, you've disappeared, I just delete you. And if your comment is particularly rude and abrasive, I block you from the channel. It's my channel, I can do what I want. All right, because you're disturbing my calm and I have to set myself up to succeed. Now, some of the comments of the last week, there, there's because we got more folks getting on. So there's more people. Uh, I answered more negative comments than I normally do. And and uh, and yesterday, day before, I'm like, you know, I can't head back down that road again. I can't do that. And uh, so I don't hardly answer. I got started down that road. I'm like, you know what? You're going to go back into failure. Set yourself up to succeed. Just delete them. Just delete them. And, uh, and that's what you got to do. You got to set yourself up to succeed. All right. Uh, whether it be your job situation, whether it be your health situation, you got to say, what can I do to make it easy for me to do what I need to do? So instead of just doing what you need to do, go first and do something that will make it easy for you to do what you need to do. You say, you know what? I really need to work out more. I need to walk more. I need to exercise more. 
But I just, every time I come in, I sit down in front of that TV. Set yourself up to succeed. Sell the TV. You're wasting all that money on, on Hulu and Amazon and, and uh, who else? Uh, whoever it is out there these days, I don't know. Disney Plus and all that stuff. Uh, if you got your satellite, what is it, Direct TV or HughesNet or whoever, stop paying that money, sell the TV, and set yourself up to succeed. Get rid of the things in your life and the people in your life that are keeping you driven on edge and, and keeping you angry all the time. Um, but your horses, set your horse up to succeed. You want them to win, okay? They have to figure it out, but set them up so it's easy for them to win and hard for them to fail, okay? Do the same thing for yourself. Daddy, do the same thing for your kids, all right? That's not participation trophies. We're not talking about that, all right? But set your kids up to succeed, all right? You have the power to order the circumstances in their life for their better or for their worse. Become a proactive parent. Have the guts to be the bad guy, all right? Have the guts to stand up to your child and say, look, I know you're gonna be mad at me for this, but I love you and this is not going to help you succeed in life as an adult, as a person, uh, and so I'm going to set you up to succeed and you could be mad at me now uh, But when you when you hit the high road in life, you'll look back at me and you say man my dad He was a stand-up guy. All right. So anyhow, I hope this helps Hope y'all have a good day If you like it click like uh, Click share and send it to somebody you think it might help and uh, If you want to leave a comment leave a comment just you can disagree, just be a decent human being about it. Just be polite or know that you're wasting your time because I'm just going to delete your comment anyhow and nobody's going to see it, all right? I just, the greatest movie line of all time, the greatest movie line of all time, I hate rude behavior in a man. I won't tolerate it, all right? So anyhow, wish you guys the best. Um, be logical. Be reasonable, be safe, and have fun. And we'll catch you guys next time.